Hello, this is uh, Dr. Bodhi Timms, uh, Program Director for the Master's in Herbal Product Design and the Certificate Program in Cannabis Science. Hello, everyone. This is Bevan Clare, and I am the Program Director for the Master's of Science in Clinical Herbal Medicine and the Post Baccalaureate Certificate in Herbal Studies. And we are going to be taking you through a webinar that talks a little bit about our programs, uh, you know, a little overview of MUIH. And, um, Hopefully we can cover all the key points you're hoping to find out by attending this webinar. So if you have any questions, you can add them to the Q&A. Uh, that's an easy way for us to take a look at this. Uh, today we're recording um, without participants, so it should be pretty question free, <laughs> but you can always reach out to us with questions at any other time. So we'd love to start by just talking a little bit about how we got here. Uh, Dr. Timms and I, came from really different places in our path to herbalism. Um, you know, herbalism is really neat because it is such a diverse field where there's a lot of different areas that you can focus and specialize. Um, for me, I was, you know, a potion maker as a kid, like always out there putting flowers and leaves and twigs and things like that together um, and really became very interested in herbal medicine at a young age. I spent a couple of years in Southeast Asia in uh, my late teens and learned a lot about the uh, capabilities of herbal medicine, especially in a primary care kind of infectious care environment when there wasn't other forms of medicine available. Um, came back, did a, an undergraduate in ethnobotany and a graduate degree in um, uh, infectious disease. And uh, ever since then, I've been really focused on the uh, herbal medicine as a practitioner in particular. I'm really interested in the herbalist as an intervention, the idea of an herbalist as part of our healthcare system, both traditionally, traditionally and contemporarily, and how we are able to navigate that as a, as a society. So I really, my career has been very dedicated to supporting the professionalism of clinical herbalists um, and uh, um, as a viable career path. So that makes a lot of sense that I'm here at MUIH. I've been here at MUIH um, since 2004. Um, so almost getting close to 20 years and have absolutely loved it watching the program develop and change. And uh, my start really was uh, through my mom uh, as a gardener and getting involved with plants. And the next big sort of step in that development was when I partnered in a health food store in Old Town Alexandria and began to study herbs intensively, um, becoming a, a clinical herbalist for a period of time. I had a number of very good mentors in the field, David Winston, Roy Upton, Michael Moore, um, but came to a conclusion at some point that my interest was stronger in the plants and why they made the medicines as opposed to the people and um, what they were going through. And so I ended up going back and getting my doctorate in the chemical ecology of medicinal plants, um, all the influences that impact the secondary metabolites, the medicinal metabolites that we use for clinical healing. And um, research really became a very creative output for me because before that I had really been a, a modern dancer and a poet, was very interested in creative processes and saw science as another way to extend that in terms of the way I thought about the world, the way I engaged with the world. And eventually found my way back to um, MUIH and the Europe program here. Uh, and um, we ended up developing a program in herbal product design. The program had, had always been clinically oriented. And so this was a new offshoot for the university and then developing the cannabis science program. And that's where we find ourselves today. And here we are. So if you're looking at MUIH as a prospective student, you might have noticed it is a unique place. You know, it's, it's very focused. Um, we have a, a, a specialty in what we're doing. It's a group of really passionate people. Um, and, I, and I love that about the university. So it's, it's dedicated solely to integrative health. That is, that's our jam, that's what we do. And we have this comprehensive array of integrative health programs and some of them offered by no other universities. So it's, it's really a, a kind of a fun, unique sort of thing. And we have a strong philosophy that guides us as far as whole person and relationship 
centered approaches, we like to think about these philosophies as coming through not just in our teaching and in our programs, but also in our interactions and the way that we are as a, as a community. Um, so you'll see that kind of juxtaposition of ancient wisdom, contemporary science, evidence-formed approaches. That is really a strong theme within the HERB program too. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go along. So we've been around since 1974 in uh, Laurel, Maryland, and, or in Columbia, Maryland at the very beginning. And so we've had this new campus since 2002. Um, uh, although now we're online a lot, a lot of our programs are online. We used to be there in, on campus full time. It's been ages now, but the campus is still there. And there's still on-site clinic and garden and dispensary and things like that. Um, so we have a lot of academic programs. We have students all over the world. And we're still a fairly small program, a um, small school. And we have a, a low um, student to faculty ratio, which I really like because it gives me an opportunity to know all of the students and to work more intimately with them. We have a lot of community partnerships and collaborations as well. So um, yeah, I'll let you take this, Bodhi. All right. Um, yeah, the ERP programs, they're, they're really one of a kind nationally. And um, they focus on um, you know, deep embedment in the uh, power of nature, uh, focus on resilience, health, and wellness. And um, acknowledging the that there are a number of cultural traditions intertwined with what we refer to inaccurately as Western herbal medicine today. These are everything from the the um, African American diaspora to traditional Chinese medicine, Ayurveda to um, native tribal knowledge and the use of plants. Um, all of this has been incorporated into the form of herbalism that we practice today. And added to that really is the fact that now we also practice contemporary science, the primary reviewed literature and research that's coming out. And we use that to uh, bolster the evidence we have from cultural traditions. And we also begin to interweave those two as two foundational elements. Um, so we're really looking at um, having graduates that come out that can um, um, help grow consumer use of herbal medicine in the community um, through health and wellness, through clinical work, through research, through the manufacture of products, and uh, in uh, retail settings where customers come looking for these products. So we've got uh, four herbal programs. Um, we have two certificate programs, uh, the post baccalaureate certificate in herbal studies, which we'll talk a little bit about today and the Cannabis Science one, which is a separate webinar that you can find out about through the website. Um, we have two master's programs, the Master's of Science in Clinical Herbal Medicine, which Bev and Claire runs, and the Master's of Science in Herbal Product Design and Manufacture, which I run. So I mentioned the, um, the combination of old and new and how this was a theme that would come up a lot. Uh, and so you know, I think this is a very important to understand when you look at being an herbalist or, or designing products and developing things is that herbalism cannot exist without its the traditional knowledge. Uh, you know, it's, it would be like cooking without any traditional knowledge if you just knew like the chemistry of what was supposed to be healthy. Uh, it, you know, it, it doesn't have um, a personality. It doesn't have a context. And, you know, herbalism is as an art as well as a science. So, you know, what we need to do is we combine a lot of the traditional knowledge with the evidence-based science. And this also comes down to understanding the tools that we have as herbalists. Uh, I like to think of it as if you tried to do an assessment of an individual to come up with a healthcare plan and all you have is their blood work, but you could never talk to them and hear about you know, their experiences and their lifestyle and all this. We need both to build a full picture. Uh, so, so that's one of the beauties of the program is that you know we rely very heavily on traditional knowledge, um, but use that to contextualize a lot of evidence-based science, um, primary literature, everything that's out there, and then bring in those career strategies, which again, you know, 
the herbalism is one of the oldest professions in the world, and particularly for women. And there's just long lineage of being herbalist, but that has that that can be different now because it can integrate into a primary care environment with the contemporary science and healthcare trainings um, or laboratory trainings that we have. So that's a really neat thing um, about combining old and new. So we are fully accredited. Uh, we're as fully accredited as like Johns Hopkins or any of the other uh, universities that is our accreditation by the Middle States Commission on Higher Education. Um, regionally, regional accreditation is the gold standard. Um, and we have um, a few, and I'm gonna let um, Bodhi talk about the HPDM program because I believe there are some different options now for this. So all, I, all of our programs can be done completely online, I believe at this point. And, uh, and yet there are in-person opportunities for both of them. And, you know, the, so they can be done online. The post baccalaureate certificate is two trimesters and those are the first two trimesters of both of the master's programs. So whether, if you're starting in any of these three programs, you start in the same place and you do the same thing for the first two trimesters. And then you branch out into your different areas or you complete if you're completing the post baccalaureate certificate. So those 12 credits are the start of the other two programs. The engagement for all of these programs is asynchronous engagement. What does that mean? So it means that it's high touch and it's very engaging. You're not just like watching a video and taking a quiz. You are interacting with peers and interacting with faculty. But the but the specific times you have to be online um, I, are, are flexible generally. There are live webinars and live classes here and there, but we try to limit those a lot and give you a lot of notice because we realize people are in different time zones and they have jobs or families or other obligations. So a lot of what we're doing is you could think of it as akin to like an online um, chat or you know things like that that happen where you're collaborating with people you have things due it's you know it's week two you have things due on monday on wednesday and on saturday uh, and everyone's working on these things together um, but asynchronously so uh, the hpdm program has some other opportunities and the hpdm program um, we do have a, a couple of things that are a bit different one there are two five-day intensives um, these are um, optional you can either take the course entirely online or come for the five-day intensives. We really encourage the intensives because of the hands-on learning for one and the bonding with your cohort who will later become a big part of your network out of the professional world. One is in QA, quality assurance, where you come to campus, get your hands on different experimental techniques and equipment and, and how to do QA measurements. And the other is a field botany trip to United Plant Savers in Ohio where we're really discussing sustainable supply chain and what it means for plants to be at risk. Uh, the other thing is we have built in um, uh, synchronous components in the class, meaning at a scheduled time, which are really mentor sessions. And they serve two really big important functions. One, the ability to meet one-on-one -on -one with an instructor as a mentor, we feel like is an excellent way to learn. And uh, especially because oftentimes these will also be in small groups with your fellow students who also become your instructors and, and your learners by the way they ask questions. Um, and it also provides, in some instances, an opportunity to uh, use your oral skills to tell the instructor what you know, say if you've struggled with some of the, how to get it down into the writing, and then it becomes a form of a feedback mechanism to help you then go back to the work that is often based in writing and improve what you've done. So we feel like those are, are ways that we can help support your learning objectives. So our courses start, um, you know, with, with these, these early courses, you have larger groups in various programs. Um, and that's when you're, you know, whether you're in the certificate program or in the, either of the masters, and then also there's students in other programs that are a lot of in these courses. And then you start being in courses that are only with other herb students. And in the end, you're in your, I put clinical herbalism courses, but it actually could be um, HPDM courses as, as well. So you're in your kind of specialty area of focus um, and in smaller groups, you know, oftentimes our cohorts are somewhere around 10 students or so. So you really get this like intimate piece, especially towards the end where you work 
closely with your faculty and with your peers, uh, which can be a lot of fun. So I'm going to start by talking, we're going to go through each one of the programs now. Um, the post-baccalaureate certificate program, again, is that those first two trimesters of both master's degrees. And this program is especially good for individuals who are interested in like horticulture, gardening, culinary arts and nutrition. You want to add a little bit of awareness about herbalism to your kind of public health or education element, um, people, parents, caregivers, and so on. It doesn't give you um, a clinical perspective as much as it gives you an awareness of how herbalism can be used to support individual health and disease. And so this is the foundation of the master's program. So you look at this modern scientific knowledge and traditional wisdom and how herbs can be part of daily life, because that's really what, uh, what they're best at in many ways. You know, herbalism should be just um, a lived experience and uh, they should be, herbs should be daily companions, not, you know, therapeutics in disease. And so you, the program is all about kind of practical skills. You make a lot of herbal make medicine products. You look at safety and being able to assess safety of different situations. You learn a basic materia medica to get you started. And you look at kind of supporting self-care. So that's really the very much the focus of this. It lays a, um, a deep yet broad foundation to be able to build on um, for the other programs or in your career that you already have. So there's a lot of different types of experiences that you have, things like learning about um, practical knowledge and home care, uh, you know, a lot of the art of herbalism, a lot of the things that, that people have done for millennia. Um, but then you learn how to find that science and to take a look at it um, and figure out how it applies in different types of situations. So, you know, you really get your feet wet in both of the areas. You're muted, but so the, uh, yeah, the post baccalaureate certificate program in the cannabis science. Um, this is a newer program. It's a separate webinar. We're not going to go into it today, uh, but just note that uh, this is available and we have a separate webinar for those, a series of them. Um, you just check the webinar site or touch base with admissions. And at the very end, we'll actually provide you with some contact points for admissions um, if you're looking for this program in particular. So the Master's of Science in Clinical Herbal Medicine starts with those two trimesters of the certificate program, and it moves on to focus on clinical care. So this, this program is all about becoming a practitioner. Um, even if you don't see yourself practicing full time, like you think you might want to be an educator or a formulator or something along those lines, it's a, it is about being an herbalist as a standalone profession or at it to your um, already existing clinical discipline. Um, so we have people that are social workers or veterinarians or physicians or nurse practitioners often in the program. And we have people who are getting started with herbalism um, as a standalone career. And it very much, and this, this piece really integrates the idea of herbalism as a cultural art, as well as a science. So this is a great program to bring in your um, cultural interest in herbalism, particularly if there is a uh, heritage or um, uh, alignment that you have with a specific culture, or if you're just interested in contemporary herbalism as it is. So we combine a lot of the tradition that we would use in herbalism therapeutics around assessment, around formulation, with what we know that it, it, what we know in a contemporary healthcare environment. So, you know, it's really neat because you get to have the traditional perspective of herbalism and how we assess the body and, um, you know, the, the biopsychosocial being, how we assess that. But we also combine that with contemporary healthcare sciences. So you get both of it. You get the, the tradition and the way that we would look at people and health and disease from a traditional energetic perspective, as well as the um, contemporary way that we would, would look at this. So you also get a lot of training in um, Materia Medica, which is the plants that you would that we would use. So you learn about a large materia medica, um, all of your herbal sciences. So you understand how herbs are working and how to extract them. Um, and um, 
your medicine making clinical theory around how to meet with a person, how to do um, an intake and interview, how to conduct a thorough assessment, um, create formulas, strategies, plans, and that at the end of the program, you undergo a practical real world experience in herbal medicine, where you'll be doing a um, online clinical program where you'll be seeing live clients, um, you'll be working with peers. Uh, we have a natural care center at the university that um, offers clinical um, uh, support services and clinical services. So you'd become part of that where you're seeing your clients and having recommendations made in the dispensary sent to your clients. Um, yeah, you know, coming back and seeing them again and working with them in depth. Um, we also, so students complete that residency in herbal practice where you are, you know, synthesizing learning in, a, in an actual clinical environment and building your practice from afar, which is really exciting. Um, the, the, the program has a deep philosophy that is very values driven. Um, all the programs that MUH do, I think, you know, the herbal, herbalism program has really centers inclusivity um, and equity in our understanding of, of herbal medicine and its application in clinical care. We use a lot of peer-to-peer -peer learning. I find that every student that comes in brings a lot to the table and has all their personal experiences and professional experiences, and we can leverage those to be able to learn from each other. Um, the idea is also to have it be active and fun and applied and experiential. So it's not just a lot of busy work to really try to make this about career building, um, and coming up with designing educational programs and group facilitation opportunities, and really like getting in there to, um, to prepare yourself. There's a lot of like kitchen medicine and exploring your own environment, meeting local herbalists, doing observation if there are local herbalists in your area or online, and just a lot of practical real world career preparedness. So some featured learning experiences that I love to share. Um, you have a course where you have a different faculty member every week who brings in a case study, talks about what they're doing, and you and your peers investigate that case study in depth. You look at contemporary biomedical um, uh, elements that you want to examine, you create formulas, you assess each other's formulas, and you hear about what that faculty member did and how that turned out for them. Um, you play with herbal preparations in your kitchen to ease compliance to see how flavor works and um, how, you know, how to actually take some of these things so that you know the most reasonable way to take them since you know, you'll be recommending this to clients. You can meet herbalists in your area and gain observation hours, also do online pieces, but there's often you know, traditional or contemporary herbalists in almost any area of the world. And so it's really fun to plug into that. You can learn a lot of local things from them. And you see clients and work with a supervisor and your peers in real world. Um, you know, you earn hours for HG certification. And there's this kind of high touch personal environment that really allows you to, to feel like you're part of something, um, to get a lot of personalized feedback and to um, be engaged with your faculty and your peers. It, uh, and so the master's in herbal product design, again, these include the first two trimesters, which are the equivalent of the post-baccalaureate certificate in herbal studies. And I did want to point out the, the post-baccalaureate certificate in herbal studies really has two important functions for you when you come in, if you're considering the program. One, it may be enough. You may not need everything that the master's provides. You want to learn about herbal medicine. You want to learn how to use it personally and with your family and friends, and you're not interested in a career in it, and this serves that purpose. Secondly, if you are like many people, you are torn between working clinically and wanting to make a product, and this is a great way for you to get some immersion um, and to decide a little bit more clearly, I have a stronger passion one way or the other. So our audience really is um, multifaceted. We're, we have clinicians and practitioners that have begun to make products and want to grow their business, and so they come in. Uh, we have entrepreneurs that really want to start their own product line. Um, we have individuals that are in an existing company, and they want those additional trainings to improve their status in that company, do more challenging work. 
and uh, folks that are interested in the herbal product research as a career. So really the basis of this is competency training, right? We, it's academic, we uh, teach scholarship, but at the service of what do you need to learn in order to be a real change maker out in the field of herbal supplements. Um, and so uh, there's a lot of information you'll learn about Materia Medica, about extraction, about analytical techniques, about formulary, about QA, about the business side of the, um, of the uh, field. But overriding all of that is really learning how to think in a way that serves you and makes you stand out. And that really means that you're able to play. You're able to play with incomplete data. You're able to continue to um, work with divergent information as, as a product comes together and to be able to use that to make decisions uh, to increase the likelihood of your product actually helping people and that it's safe and that it's a good choice for that business. And so this tends to be uh, fairly broad and deep in terms of the knowledge you gain. And you're exposed to multiple roles, which gives you an opportunity to find out what am I really good at? What do I like doing? What, what is that natural sort of intuitive fit? Um, here are some other courses uh, and topics that we cover. And you can see that it's fairly broad. Um, we have just begun designing a new course for this cohort, which is on the business of herbal products, um, which we feel like is really important. It helps you in terms of creating a business plan, a, a launch strategy, um, gets you thinking about what sort of an investor needs you might have for capital formation. Um, what does it look like in, in terms of when you start out, if you're not going to do it all yourself and you're dealing with contract manufacturers, or contract labs, uh, what does an equitable and sustainable supply chain look like? So um, you can see that there is a lot that we're going to go over. Um, you'll have an internship um, as well. You'll have a, a case study course at the end of your studies where you and small groups will help solve a problem in the real world for a company. And we've worked with a number of large companies as well as smaller companies, some folks in the cannabis space and the herbal space. Um, and it's a great opportunity to really learn um, what, what are the challenges that companies face? And then two, the way we have you work with them is you come up with the decision-making matrix. And I think this, this reflects some of that thinking teaching that goes on. You, there are a lot of solutions to the same problem, depending on how much can be invested. What's the training like? What's the, the skill set like? Uh, what's the timeline, et cetera. So I think you'll find this to be uh, an invigorating program for you. Um, like Bevan had said, all the programs here are driven by uh, values and peer-to-peer -peer learning. Um, our program may be more than others because of the nature of the study, very exper experientially driven. Uh, you get a lot of uh, herbal kits in your courses that you have to work at at home. Um, it's an inquiry-driven learning, meaning it's not about getting the answer right. It's about the willingness to, in fact, get the wrong answer so you, you can reframe a set of questions that moves your project forward. And the other part of it is that there are going to be a lot of challenges. It's such a broad field that there are going to be areas you're strong in and some that you're weak in. And so that's where that quote from Picasso comes from. Learning how to do things that you don't necessarily how to do well so that by the end, um, you're really uh, much more competent and capable of, con of contributing to a larger effort, either in a company or for your own company. So at the very heart of this, when we talk about inquiry, it really is another word for that is research. And so woven throughout the program is product development, uh, an understanding of basic clinical research or plant-based research, and that could go from growing to processing uh, to what part of the plant to use, how to extract it, and the product. What does that final product look like? What form? Is it a gummy? Is it a tincture? What's the dosing regimen? Uh, what's my market that I'm really focused on? Is it pure wellness? Am I trying to solve a specific condition? So these are all things that we go into and that are part of this inquiry research-driven process. 
You'll do a lot of review of, of literature, and this is really a form of scholarship, learning how to do appropriate citation and referencing, um, learning how to understand scientific information, the flow of it in a paper, how to go in and make that information your own and your own words and own the thinking. Um, there'll be regulatory research since the FDA requires uh, really that products are safe and that there's a good manufacturing process that ensures quality assurance. Um, safety is a big issue, learning how to put a, a new dietary ingredient claim in, um, and then some focus on the growing. And in the end, again, all of these processes are about deep learning that's based on your curiosity and the development of a craft. Anyone who's done any kind of artistic work or woodworking or machine or um, sewing or weaving or anything like that. Th these are all crafts. They are skills that deepen over time the more you do it and the more your mind is open to learning. And that's really what research is. So the important piece here for a lot of you is what are the career opportunities? What does this look like? Uh, you know, while the program is really fun, you're probably not coming just because it's fun. And this is something you're thinking about for a career. And this is something that um, Dr. Timms and I have taken very seriously. It's been a primary focus of both of ours for many years is how to make sure that our alumni are career ready, that they, you know, um, can get out there and do incredible things. And I have to say it's worked really well. Um, so the first thing for the clinical program that all, so the graduates of all programs, um, of both of the programs can become associate members of the American Herbalist Guild. And um, any of the three programs, you can become an associate member. The graduates of the clinical program are eligible to apply for a registered herbalist credential, which is uh, the, the highest standard of clinical herbalist practitioner um, if you're, if you're not like a Chinese or Ayurvedic herbalist. And the program actually meets all of the educational requirements for the RH credential. Um, and then you just need some more um, um, observation hours and clinical hours that you do in your own practice afterwards, and then you're done. Um, it's also important to mention that another way that some students do this is that doing the master's in clinical herbalism is a little bit of like a backdoor way to get to a nutrition license. So if you finish the master's in clinical herbalism and you take the post-baccalaureate certificate um, in um, clinical nutrition, I'm sorry, the post-master's certificate in nutrition, then you're eligible to um, apply to become a licensed nutritionist using the CNS exam, which is the same way if you did the master's in nutrition. So really there's two different ways to get to that CNS um, credential through nutrition or um, through herbalism. And I'm happy to answer questions about that, you know, if you have any, but that's another way to do it. So our career opportunities in clinical herbal medicine really in, in, all, in both programs have to do with creating leaders in the field. If you look at the field of kind of um, Western clinical herbalism in the United States, you will see uh, our alumni in leadership positions all through the field. We create leaders. Um, we have people who are lead formulators. Um, they had prominent nonprofits, they have busy private practices, they teach in academic institutions, and they're speakers and spokespeople for herbal medicine. So if you find like an herbal medicine conference or symposia, it's often full of our alumni as authoritative speakers, which is really a neat thing. I think, you know, you dedicate years of your life to this uh, in a rigorous program, and that's what comes out on the other end. So I wanted to mention a few specific alumni who are doing great things out there. Rebecca Snow has a um, busy practice. She now has uh, four practitioners that work for her um, and they are incredibly busy. She also has a mentorship program and a lot of other types of educational programs. And uh, she is a clinical herbalist um, and was in the first cohort of the program. Um, I had the pleasure to meet um, with um, the owner of Luna Lactation and Wellness when I was in Portland, Oregon um, a couple months ago. And that was fabulous to see 
So she specializes in, in herbalism and also in um, client care around lactation care. So that's a really, you know, th she's taken that into her area of specialty and has a thriving practice and beautiful office in Oregon. Um, Charlotte Keichel is a published author and busy practitioner in uh, of, of herbalism and nutrition, uh, merges both of those things in her practice and in, um, in Texas. And uh, Susan Hirsch is the formulation manager for Gaia Herbs, which is, I think, one of the best herb companies out there in the market right now. Uh, she is a graduate of the clinical program and, um, you know, really brings a lot of perspective and expertise to her role at Gaia. Um, she started out doing something quite different and was um, clearly valuable to the company and is now the formulation manager. Um, Chris Webb is also, at, he is at um, New Chapter and does a tremendous amount of formulation and science guidance for them and has had a really wonderfully successful um, career at New Chapter. And uh, Karen Henderson started the Veterans Resiliency Holistic Clinic um, and does a lot of work in um, Herbalist Without Borders as well. Does a lot of consulting for the um, VA, uh, is just doing fantastic stuff in her work also. Um, Mimi Hernandez is the Executive Director of the uh, American Herbalist Guild and has been for quite a while. Um, she was also in that, I think in the first or second of the herb classes and cohorts at the program. And so she has just done tremendous things with the American Herbalist Guild as its ED. Um, and it's great to see her kind of use her expertise in that area. Um, Ruby Daniels is a more recent alum. She is a um, fourth, I believe, fourth generation herbalist in Appalachia and has kind of merged her cultural traditions and awareness as a Afro-Lachian forest farmer and herbalist with um, the contemporary healthcare sciences that we know about. Um, and so now the Smithsonian does a lot of work with her and is really interested in her perspective as an herbalist because of um, her feet in both worlds of contemporary academia along with tradition. And Larkin Bunce started the Vermont, Ce Vermont Center for Integrative Herbalism, which has been very busy and even um, picked up by Goddard College who accredits her programs uh, and has really done some wonderful things with a very busy herb school that's been going for um, 15 years or so now. And Ayo Negosi does a lot of writing and teaching in a, in a number of different areas, but especially for the Herbal Academy, which is a popular international online school um, that you can find out there. And uh, Ayo brings a, just a huge amount of um, perspective and understanding in uh, her areas of expertise in herbalism. So that's just a few of them. I mean, there's so many alumni doing some wonderful things. So it's great to share what they're doing. You might be muted, Bodhi. Sorry, I keep muting myself. <laughs> that's okay. Um, so the um, career opportunities in herbal product design. Um, I will mention we had our first cohorts in both the cannabis program and the herbal product design graduates. So um, we don't have as long a history as that clinical program. In fact, there are some of the folks I'll mention that were in what we had had as an area of concentration in herbal product design that I'll mention. Um, but this data is something I really, I like. Data can be truthful or data can be manipulated. Um, my perspective is this is very truthful data. When you look at the total sales of herbal supplements, this is from 2000 to 2018 in the graph with 19 and 20 over there to the right of the graph. And you see a, um, an increase in sales fairly consistently. But if you look at the slope of that line, it's continuing to get uh, deeper and deeper, which means that there's an acceleration in the sales as people um, use them. And the box in the red is simply the last great depression uh, where we had uh, increased sales even within that framework. You can see that during COVID, the, uh, it increased by 15%. This is a vibrant marketplace. Uh, people are increasingly looking for products 
um, that are alternative to drugs, and that's going to continue to grow. Um, this gives you a little bit of an idea of how important formulation is and understanding how to meet the needs of a, a larger marketplace. So a clinical herbalist will work one-on-one -on -one with an individual, but you can't do that in terms of making product. So for clinicians who formulate uh, for products or people from our program, you're really looking at a population level uh, condition that you can define in such a way, clinically speaking, that you can then put a formulary together that's going to be effective. Um, and you can see from this red box that the percentage growth is much higher for the combination herbs. We're having a more sophisticated marketplace now, folks who are looking for solutions that go beyond single herbs. Um, and now in, in uh, um, 2019 and 2020, that, that trend continues to grow. Uh, that we're, we need to have sophisticated formulary people out in the marketplace who know how to make a product. This just gives you an idea in the herbal product design program, we try to have one module in each class that deals with cannabis, just because um, cannabis and herbal medicine is going to merge. Um, it's our belief in 10 years time, um, you're really, they're going to be much more enmeshed in each other Cannabis won't be such a standalone. Certainly recreational use is different, but we have recreational use of some of the uh, herbal medicines out there as well. Not to the same degree, obviously, but um, so we want people to be well-versed. This just shows you that CBD sales um, is the you know, highest grossing herbal in the marketplace, in the supplement marketplace. So uh, this, I already mentioned that uh, the focus in our program, particularly in the herbal product design, is in the CB dominant hemp based products. Um, in the cannabis program, we deal a lot more with the THC dominant products for both medical and recreational use. Um, this last bit, if you take a look at um, really the sort of the, the nine o'clock hour where it says CGMP dietary supplement adulterated misbranded. This really speaks to um, FDA regulatory compliance. And in our program, we really want you to step out understanding that the FDA is going to look for certain things. We don't want you getting in trouble. But also additionally, what the FDA is looking for is useful to you as a company in terms of building brand trust. And that is high quality. That's around good manufacturing practices. That's around quality assurance practices that makes sure that the product that you say is in the marketplace is there from the point of view of the plants that are supposed to be in that formulary, the concentrations, that there are no adulterants, that there are no uh, contaminants, microbial growth, et cetera. So this is really also another important part of the program is saying you can know all about formulary, but do you know how to put together a really good product and prove it? So we have a number of alumni out there that I'm going to highlight for you. It gives you a range. Daniel Powers is in our first cohort out of the herbal product design program. Um, he has started a company called uh, Utsi um, that's out there making products. Um, I look him up. Um, he's also put together the Botanical Institute, which has got a number of our graduates as well, where what they're doing is they're taking the same capacity to rationally design products for themselves and supporting other folks out in that marketplace with research and, and a deep dive into the primary peer-reviewed literature. Uh, ben Levine is a co-founder at Rasa. This is a, a, a mushroom coffee company that has herbals in it. Um, they've done really well. Um, he is continually uh, sort of um, active in terms of the lecture circuit as well. The, the focus is on adaptogens and sort of wellness, um, but they've got an exciting market out there and they have a product that's selling. Um, Christine McPhee um, is doing QA for Now Foods, which is really a large, very large company in terms of both uh, nutritional and herbal supplements. She'd been a consultant before um, she understands that QA process really well. 
Uh, she's active now in the company, but she continues to work as a consultant in the field. And this is something that we'll see her in terms of continued network growth, uh, new skills that she's picked up, obviously income, and then getting well known. Uh, Christine Ryan uh, did an internship with Herbal Revolution uh, around their GMPs, and uh, she is now running the GMPs for that company. This is an interesting farm and apothecary. Um, they actually were also involved in our case study course where a group of students helped them design a whole new product line. So this is really what comes out of interacting not only with the knowledge base, but then applying it to real world issues out in the field of herbal supplements. And finally, this is just a review of the types of jobs in the manufacturing arena. Um, the uh, number of alumni that in formulary from the clinical program, uh, Chris was mentioned by Bevan, he does a lot along this educational arc where you have both external and internal education. So internal, which is what Chris does, is around the research for product development. And he needs to be able to communicate with growers, with people that are processing, extracting, uh, doing the product formulary, doing the QA. And so you need to be able to be competent in terms of uh, speaking to all the expertise and, and, uh, and actually communicating about the, the development of a product across a full arc of all kinds of different personnel. And the external obviously is to talk to a consumer market. How do you take complex research and data and create a narrative that's accessible uh, and is stimulating to the general public in a way that they wanna buy your product? R&D, we've got safety R&D, which is substantiating claims that you make for safety. Uh, formulary, where you combine both tradition and science. Both of those buckets of knowledge are incomplete. And sometimes you need to be able to do a weave between the two, be able to take what you know about tradition and link it to some contemporary scientific mechanisms so that you can then link it to a broader knowledge of research in science that helps support that traditional use. And then product R&D. Um, quality insurance will involve quality control, which in its simplest forms says, if you don't write it down, it doesn't exist. And you have that because you wanna be able to trace your product back to a specific plant in a field and to understand what lot it was in, how it was extracted, what were the conditions that that processing was done in, um, where was it stored? What was the heat and the humidity in that storage? How long was it on the truck? All the way through, because that's how you ensure quality. But in case something happens, that's also a way you track back and limit your exposure. Um, obviously, the GMP specifications, these are things that are around when the claims you make. When you say you have calendula in your product, you need to be able to prove that. You need to be able to identify that. If you are standardizing your herbal supplement, that you have specific percentage of certain phytochemicals that you believe are necessary for the therapeutic endpoint, you need to be able to prove that. You need to show that there's no contaminant in there, that there's no microbial growth, that you haven't bought product from bad sourcing where they actually put in adulterants. Other plants that maybe once they're powdered, look like the plant that you think you bought. Uh, so these are all parts of quality assurance. And then in production, that can be everything from your cultivation and buying to the processing to the extraction specialists. So you can see there's a broad range of skills that you're going to gain and a lot of ways that you can enter into the marketplace. Well, thank you for joining us today. And uh, you can see our email addresses here if you have additional questions. Also, if you have questions about things like financial aid or admissions requirements, you can contact the admissions department. Uh, they're a great place to start. And you can find a lot of the information about the program, such as the curriculum and the um, overall kind of layout and the cost on our website at muih.edu. So thanks for, for being here today and um, reach out anytime. We're, we're open to any conversation. Uh, I think that's important that you realize you can approach us offline uh, because we want you to make a good decision for yourself 
And if you join the MUAH family, then uh, that'll be wonderful. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.